being on the outside isn't simply a question of race or gender. It's a question of marginalization and access. And that can happen to almost every person. For me, it, it wasn't about standing in solidarity with Palestine exclusively. It's about being part of a movement that can't divide or separate these various forms of oppression and that can't make a decision about vulnerable people in Ferguson and not make the same decision about vulnerable people in the West Bank or in Gaza or, in, or in, inside of 48. But when you go to the core of being a democratic society, it cannot be a fully democratic society if parts of that community are not seen and not heard. But they will only be seen and heard if the representatives of those communities step up and start speaking. Because it's insufficient to simply be a voter when the people you are electing do not reflect or understand your needs. The media will address crime in a particular community, and I wish they would just call the address out, but they label it a particular community. For instance, this is a pet peeve of mine. Uh, I grew up in Chatham, and if you know the history of Chatham, uh, just do a little research on it, see who grew up there, see what businesses were there, see what owners of businesses were there, see who uh, currently live there today. And every time a crime occurs, for convenience, they will say Chatham. It could happen in 92nd Cottage Grove, Chatham. That's not Chatham. Uh, there's a community called Chatham and Avalon. Chatham kind of stops at Cottage Grove, Avalon picks up. Everything is labeled, and, and they're doing it throughout the city for whatever the reasons are, ignorance or whatever, um, and it kills possible growth in a particular community when you label everything happening in that particular community when it's outside of the community. Long before Mike Brown gets killed by Darren Wilson, I'm trying to think through all the forces and processes that get him there before you get, you get he doesn't get stopped from Darren Wilson for stealing from the store, um, which wouldn't be, certainly that's not a capital crime, but he wouldn't even stop, he would stop for jaywalking. And he stopped for jaywalking precisely because Ferguson made most of his money at that time, and, and largely now, from, from debts and fines. I mean, 80% of the town had a warrant at that point. So the police officers become tax collectors, bill collectors essentially, and their job is to keep stopping people like Mike Brown for jaywalking. So the death sequence that begins there begins because of a set of state policies and practices that were all about collecting more money. But if you look at the, the if you disaggregate that data for race, it's black folk that are getting pulled over and stopped for jaywalking. White folk are getting pulled over for jaywalking. White people poor and working class too. black folks in particular. Exactly. Poor and working class black folks in particular. Which is what Ferguson is, right? Which is another thing about Ferguson, which is a kind of representation of the suburbanization of poverty. Because Ferguson's a suburb. Compton's a suburb. I think poverty is immoral. It is economically inefficient. It is a stain on our humanity. It is a waste of human capital. It is the cause of most of our social pathologies, and it is solvable. This is, a, this is a problem that we can solve. There's this intersection of race and class that renders black folk the most vulnerable, and it renders the most vulnerable the most disposable, because it's much easier to, to create structures to contain them and blame them than it is to invest in them and support them. We live what we learn. And it is irrelevant what we tell our young people if what they see is something that's wholly contradictory. And so our responsibility is to restore the authenticity and the integrity of our institutions so that in the classroom, in the community, they actually see that there's a lived experience of those values. For me, those values are, are absolutely universal. Service is not something that's endemic to those with privilege, with power, with resources. It is something you can do every day, but we need to build that back into how we think about our daily life. You see how difficult it is to integrate a room based off your neighborhoods? That's the kind of work is required to integrate our city. <laughs> you have to ask people where they live, you have to ask people, you have to invite them to your table. I know it seemed confusing, but the process is part of the whole experience. I believe if we can do it tonight in this room, our city can also do it.